Hello everyone, in this video we'll be talking about inset. Inset of course is one of the more unusual aspects of box cutters, so of course it, does, it requires a little bit more discussion. So if we click and drag and begin drawing on the surface, I'll press H to go back to solid. I can press I and switch over to inset, where I can then press T to adjust the thickness on the fly, which basically anything involving solidify, you adjust the thickness by pressing T inside of box cutter. So the same thing goes for end gone line as well. However, we'll right click and cancel this. And the thing about inset is that the way that works is that it duplicates the mesh, it solidifies it, and then it cuts it into the original mesh. So the more advanced the form is, and the more things you have connecting to edges, the more trouble that you'll have when it comes to that solidification part, and thus have more issues when it comes to inset. So here I am creating a rather advanced shape in the corner of this box. I also put some circles around it. If we press D and we switch over to box, and we attempt to inset this area, we see that it simply shows us nothing. We could press T and adjust our thickness, and maybe if we just go low enough, we might see something for a flicker of a moment, but the result is definitely less than satisfactory. In fact, we could see it kind of bulging a little bit out of control, and this is because Solidify isn't going to be able to handle this sort of advanced mesh very well. However, whenever it comes to this sort of stuff, Box Cutter does have a the ability for you to get in and actually get more intimate when it comes to diagnosing these sort of issues. So if you have hard ops installed, pressing Control K will bring up the preferences window and you can look at the preferences of hard ops or the preferences of box cutter. And for us, we just want to enable debug. Debug will allow us to use inset in a little bit more examinatory of a way compared to our general usage. So Let's click and drag and create our shape over this. We'll press I to inset, and we see that the result is less than satisfactory. Now the good thing about being in debug mode is that we are able to still use the properties panel, and we're even able to go through and toggle the modifiers off and on. So we see that everything looks a little messed up. Let's press X and turn it into a cut. Let's press I and turn it into an inset. And we see that now we're able to use the inset a lot farther because the shape is in a more simplified state. However, we could also turn back on the original cuts that we had and begin stacking them up. In fact, we could turn all of them on and just by adjusting the thickness, we see that we get a little bit friendlier of a relationship between inset and our main mesh. This previously used to be under something called inset and recut and box cutter, but we'll be needing to re-examine its uh, reintroduction of it to users. But I'm just letting you know that even though I have all these modifiers on, it's evaluating it against a mesh that's actually unmodified because all these modifiers are turned off. At the state that I brought it up, so we could actually press X, turn this into a cut, press X, or actually press I, turn it back into an inset, and let's actually turn on these first two, and we'll press X, and we'll press I. And now we see that the inset's getting tricky again. However, we are now insetting this particular region based on just these two cuts and not actually all these subsequent circle cuts, which we can now turn back on and add. And this is actually a better way to approach inset. However, you know, when it comes to conveying these sort of things and understanding to the user, it's a little bit more difficult because, I mean, your modifier stack order matters and the proximity of your geometry to edges and how it has a relationship with solidify also matters. So if we click and apply, we see that we're able to get this cut done. In fact, we could press Q, bring back ever scroll and just move this piece over just to get it out of that corner of contention. And let's even try doing it again. Let's bring a cut over this area and we'll press I. And we see that miraculously inset actually worked, but let's press H to look at the wire and let's press T to adjust the thickness. And we see that as we go to a certain range, things just get out of control. Well, we can actually control that. Let's turn off, let's see, one of these was a new inset. We probably want to keep that one but we do want to toggle the circle out of existence. So let's press X and let's press I. And now we're actually insetting this area without the circles being taken into account. So we're able to get a much more simplified result, but we can also toggle the circles back on, which we can deal with their location and depth afterwards. 
but this is truly a much more better way to get control of solidify and this is kind of a testament to the power of box cutter of allowing you to be able to pause and examine all these modes to get to the nitty gritty of how they are the way they are and even force things to work that wouldn't normally work so let's just press g move this shape around because i see that i'm clipping a little bit of this in a negative way we don't want to actually expose any mesh that's unneeded and we could even press t give it even more thickness let's just click and apply q ever scroll and let's just bring this piece back ever scroll get this piece and put it back and we see that we were able to inset this area that's actually quite complex and normally it wouldn't even allow us to do such things so let's have some fun here under hard ops we also have this area where we could talk about the boolean bevel helper an interesting thing about this is you can actually toggle modifiers off and on and you can even toggle their presence on the mesh so let's toggle off the auxiliary circles for a moment so that's one of them this one is another one that one's one that one's also one so we've simplified the mesh just a little bit which means that we can now draw a box over this region and press i in order to inset and we see that things got a little bit dicey and it's because we have all these complex edges which are going to give solidify the business so we'll need to lower it to something more reasonable and it looks like this is about the range that we'll be able to get with our solidify at this time but we could basically disable these two insets press x press i press t and we see that we're able to inset it even more and let's just press spacebar and apply and let's bring back all the cuts that we previously toggled off so there's more than one way to actually get to the bottom of an inset and you can even force it to work if you need it to just utilizing the power of the debug system inside of box cutter which allows you to kind of get a little bit more exploratory with some of its functions but that'll do it for this video with that i'll wrap this up and i'll see you guys next time